I am Scott Grundy, a professor of internal medicine at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center and VA Medical Center in Dallas. I am chair of the writing committee of the 2018 Cholesterol Guidelines, which are sponsored by the American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association. Several other related organizations have contributed to the writing of this guideline. The online version of this guideline is being published today in the journal Circulation and the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. Our guidelines incorporate new science and new clinical trials that have been published since 2013. These allow for a revision and updating of the 2013 guidelines. The foundation of cholesterol guidelines is a healthy lifestyle. Lifestyle intervention is emphasized regardless of whether cholesterol-lowering drugs are recommended. Lifestyle includes cholesterol-lowering diet, weight control, regular physical activity, and avoidance of cigarette smoking. For drug therapy, statins are the first-line drugs. They can be life-saving for those patients at risk for atherosclerotic disease. For high-risk patients, like those of, with vascular disease, high-intensity statins are preferred. For primary prevention in patients at intermediate risk, moderate-intensity statins can be used. For primary prevention, a 10-year risk for heart attack and stroke is calculated with the risk calculator. This calculator makes use of the major risk factors like smoking, high blood pressure, and diabetes. Patients are divided into high risk, intermediate risk, borderline risk, and low risk. Patients at high risk generally should go directly to statin therapy. So should patients with diabetes or very high LDL levels. Intermediate risk patients should discuss with their doctor whether to use statins. The clinician should consider all the risk factors affecting risk besides the major risk factors. Some of these factors may tip the balance to using statins. If risk remains uncertain, as a last resort, the patient can have measurement of coronary calcium. Coronary artery calcium measurements <coughs> are an indication of the amount of atherosclerosis present. If the level is zero, it may be possible to avoid statins altogether. If calcium is present, statin therapy is favored. Our new guidelines put greater emphasis on detecting high blood cholesterol and high lifetime risk earlier in life in children and young adults. Early intervention on risk factors can delay onset of heart disease and stroke later in life. Once treatment is started, the effects should be monitored and reinforced regularly throughout life. Too few people adhere to effective treatment in the long run. A sizable portion of patients treated with the statins complain of side effects. These should be carefully evaluated and appropriately managed. In many patients, real or perceived side effects can be effectively treated. High blood cholesterol is one of the major risk factors. Others are high blood pressure, cigarette smoking, diabetes, obesity, and physical inactivity. The American Heart Association strives to develop strategies for control of these factors for both clinical practice and the general public. We congratulate our outstanding writing panel and American Heart Association team of professionals in the development of our cholesterol guidelines.